here we are it's part four and uh, it's page 156 we're continuing on with the integumentary system the skin and uh, some of the features of the skin here the next thing we're going to focus on is specifically skin color uh, within the textual sense here of the uh, book and so uh, melanin is a it's described as a polymer it's based on the um, amino acid tyrosine it's very easy to make for a very common molecule and it's the color of everything so um, <laughs> at least that's how I look at it it's the color of skin it's the color of hair it's the color of your eyes the iris um, so um, so if somebody has uh, blue eyes then they have just no color uh, no melanin uh, if they have brown eyes then they have more melanin. Uh, there's a variation on really dark brown and lighter brown, and then there's uh, ultimately hazel, or not that brown, shall we say, sort of greenish colored eyes. And so there's quite a variation in a theme. The same thing with skin color. It can go from very light to all the different shades uh, that you can possibly imagine, all the way uh, to a very dark, uh, blackish color that is very uh, present in people who are uh, outdoorsy types and uh, spend um, you can see the variation um, in individuals that uh, sometimes their faces are much darker than uh, other parts of their body that are hidden by uh, shirts or um, uh, skirts or pants or whatever um, so there's variations in a theme and it's based on sunlight um, and again, I've mentioned this before, that uh, we have that variation as part of our very brief experience with evolution. We don't have much experience with evolution because we haven't been a species for long enough. But in the past 50 years, we have two hot spots, uh, and one of them is uh, skin color, and the other one is um, the ability to metabolize dairy products. So um, there's a few people around that can do dairy, actually fewer than you can imagine uh, as adults. And so uh, probably consider those, consider dairy an inflammatory <laughs> type of experience for a lot of people. And um, also consider the nature and need of uh, sunlight. So um, there's a famous uh, woman of uh, lady of science that I like to promote as much as possible. Her name is Marion Nestle, N-E-S-T-L-E. -E. Um, she's a PhD in molecular biology specializing in nutrition and uh, she teaches out of Columbia and Cornell University and is at UC Berkeley usually once a semester uh, to help uh, Michael Pollan with the uh, edible education program. She's brilliant and I, I love her. She has books out, Marion Nestle, uh, popular books as well as of course lots of PubMed Central and PubMed uh, publications. So um, she's quite the, uh, the woman scientist. So with that in mind, let's press on here into um, melanocytes. There's all kinds of um, uh, production, as I noted. Uh, besides eye color, there's skin color and there's hair color. Uh, skin color and hair color do not have to go hand in hand. Some people have light colored skin but very dark colored hair. Right, and so there's variations on a theme, and um, whatever it is that um, uh, the genetics uh, sort of, how shall I say, presuppose is what happens. So then we have um, UV radiation. What's the goodness of that? The goodness of UV radiation is that we need vitamin D, and vitamin D is uh, an essential, uh, absolutely essential requirement. Um, and that it helps with the um, uh, uptake of uh, calcium from the diet. And then in 2016, we had a banner year for uh, vitamin D. We discovered that it turns out that um, it's required for uh, calcium to cross the membranes of the heart and improve heart function. So that's a heavy-duty uh, outcome. And now we've, we've learned quite a bit more about uh, vitamin D. So um, dark-skinned people can get skin cancer, it turns out. Uh, but less so than uh, fair-skinned people. Um, I'm a fair-skinned person, and I end up 
have uh, I've had cancer skin cancer many times and I have it right now uh, and I need to get a couple of the uh, lesser dangerous types of cancer removed from my skin my father died of uh, the uh, sequela of uh, skin cancer he had a much more dangerous variety because he loved to sit in the sun in Miami and play chess not a not a smart move on his part um, at any rate so there are things to be considered here um, meanwhile um, there's lots of uh, they talk here about uh, some people actually recover from uh, disease uh, various kinds in the summer uh, because they get to be outside, they get to have more circulation, they get to have direct sunlight. So there's a lot to be said for direct sunlight, uh, UV radiation, and um, probably not so smart to be out in the noonday sun unless you're uh, somebody who needs the extra vitamin D. If you're a dark-skinned person, then uh, in San Francisco, the noonday sun is exactly the right place to be. I have a best friend, Kenyon, who likes to take a run uh, for lunch. Instead of eating lunch, he runs uh, a 10K, a fast 10K, and then he eats something after that. So um, then uh, it's possible, though, to have very little in the way of skin color, and you, um, well, we'll get to that in a second, but first of all, there's carotene. Uh, you can actually eat food and uh, produce skin color from the food itself, vitamin A. So we have carotene from carrots, uh, carotene also is coloring other things like fruits uh, and uh, vegetables that are of the orange persuasion. Uh, certainly the uh, butternut squash is that particular thing. And then there's um, various melons that have orange color to them. Uh, hemoglobin, uh, if you're in a pinch and you have no other options, there's always being pink. And a lot of babies are rather pink uh, in nature because they um, they haven't developed the ability to produce melanin so readily. So uh, newborns in particular are naive with regard to sunlight and uh, the production of uh, color in the skin. Uh, then we have abnormal uh, types of color. Redness is an example where we've had some injury or a response to uh, inflammation. Um, redness, pain, swelling, and heat are the signs of inflammation and so redness could mean that uh, inflammation, or it could just mean embarrassment. Uh, then we have pallor, which is um, basically, in this case, um, we're, we're having no color. We're having the draining of color, as it were. And that's because this, uh, the blood has left the skin, sometimes in emotional stress or uh, terror, uh, or just you're really cold. Uh, you drop into really cold water. And... Um, uh, or um, you're not feeling well. There's a variety of things. Low blood pressure can do, have that effect. Um, hepatitis, uh, causing injury to the uh, liver, jaundice, is the result of that. So um, we have bile. Some In people of dark skin color, you have to look at the uh, whites of the eyes in order to see the yellow cast of the skin color. Up here we have um, bronzing. Uh, bronzing is something that happens with regard to underproduction of um, the steroid hormone from the um, uh, adrenal cortex, uh, which is cortisol. Uh, the official name of the disease is Addison's disease. And sometimes bronzing occurs in the face. Uh, you can see it on the forehead sometimes uh, with regard to um, response to sunlight and so on. Then we have uh, bruising. Uh, sometimes if there is a uh, injury to the skin, uh, you're going to want to know about bruising and be uh, cognizant of it if you, you have children in your clinic and you want to be aware of uh, abuse and things like that. Also, if there is a fracture, uh, usually downstream from the fracture, maybe at the ankle or the top of the foot or the wrist or the top of the back of the hand, there's a little bit of bronzing or uh, bruising but there's nothing wrong with your hand or the top of your foot. It's actually where the blood has uh, has uh, ended up from a um, uh, a little fracture of one kind or another. Okay, so that's part four. We'll move on to part five.